Kevin here from Balls to the Walls, bringing you a doubleheader battle report against my buddy Marcus. And this is going to be the first battle report featuring my GT 1850 point Dark Eldar army. It's the first two battles I'm going to use in a singles game with them, and I'm very excited to use them. I just finished building and priming all the models today. Sorry, they're not all painted. About half of them are painted. This half over here, I just built them, so... I'm looking forward to using them in the first couple games, try to get as many practice games in before I go and hit up the GT in April. So I've got a month of practice. Um, I agreed Mark to play Marcus tomorrow in two games, one against his 1850 Tyranid G GT list and once against a 1850 Necron list. I tried to get him to play me and with both armies so I can have experience playing as many armies as possible before going to a GT with an army I'm very unexperienced with. I am mostly a marine and guard player, so coming out with Dark Eldar is a big thing for me, and this is I plan on being my main army for, well, the rest of 5th edition, probably most of 6th edition. So I'd like to go, we both agreed on making videos, one beforehand, and of course the two battle reports. Um, so I'd first like to go over my army list, and then I'll go over the strategy behind my army and how I'm going to face his two lists. So, to lead out the army, I have the Baron Sathanix. Sarthanix, Sathanix, can't get the correct pronunciation. Of course, most people were going with the Green Goblin look. I'm actually going to go with the Red Baron. Well, he is the Baron, so I might as well make him the Red Baron. And I converted him up, trying to make him look as much like the picture as possible in the book. Gave him gray hair instead of the typical red hair you see with Dark Eldar. Another th thing I noticed about Dark Eldar, why does everyone think they're gingers? Every, pick, every single model I've ever seen is making them gingers. And of course, I made mine gingers as well. Red hair, pale skin. I'm gonna put some freckles on these guys, probably. Anyway, he has gray hair, um, some raider pieces, a raider head, so just different hair. And I just tried to model him up as much like the picture as possible. He came up pretty good. The paint job could have been a little better since I'm trying to make this a competitive army with a decent enough paint job to get me good points in the tournament. I'm hoping to get enough, a good painting score at least with this army. They're definitely my best painted army so far. A lot of highlighting. Good color scheme. Uh, slash die color scheme, slash die theme. I know, Sathanix doesn't really make sense, but it's kind of like his, I guess, his army that left with him when he got banished from the Cabal. These are his loyalists that stayed with him. Um, also, well, back to my army, so I have the Baron. Also in HQ choice, I have two homunculi. One homunculus ancient with a stinger pistol, uh, uh, anime of AT, and a uh, shatter shard. And the other homunculus has a cascade of flensing and a hex rifle. Uh, as for troops, I have, of course, the Baron making Helion's troops. He has his Helion bodyguard, nine Helions, uh, with a uh, Heliarch with a stun claw and splinter pistol. I also have a fan oh, phant phantasm grenade launcher in there as well. Then I have two identical Cabalite Warrior squads. That one I just finished building and priming today, and as well as a traitor, so had to get these guys done for this game. So, sorry about the unpainted models on that half. Let's look at these pretty models. <laughs> um, warriors, 10 Warriors, uh, led by a Cyrobite with an Agonizer and Blast Pistol, and a Blaster, as well as a Dark Lance. I have two of those identical units and a raider with a dark lance, flicker field, night shields, and splinter x. So three troop choices, pretty good. And after playing in the doubles tournament, I decided that instead of having five troop choices with witch squads, I decided to go with Hecatrix Blood Brides with the extra attacks and higher leadership. They kind of need that. There's nine of them because they go with one of them, each of them get a homunculus to give them feel no pain at the start, I'm trying to upgrade them as soon as possible so they're most effective in combat. So I have nine of them, all with hay haywire grenades, uh, a siren with an agonizer and blast pistol. And then Mind Phase Gauntlets and a Chardonnay Impaler. Mind Phase Gauntlets have been modeled onto this squad. They're on the other squad. I have the bits up in Rhode Island. I just haven't converted them yet. I've decided to actually change from Razor Flays to them. Very, um, at, actually, yesterday I decided to do that. Um, just a decision of mine. Last minute. Hopefully it works out. They are both in Raiders with Chain Snares, Advanced Aether, Thale, Aether Sails, uh, Flickerfield, and Light Shields. 
And then of course, to sum up all the list, I have two Ravagers with uh, Flicker Field and Night Shields. So that gives me 1850, about, I believe it's 1846 or 47, something around there. Um, but it's a good idea, and on to exactly how I'm going to play this army in most games. Okay, so on to the concept of this army. Now, when I was first building this army, I was trying to decide um, which way to go. Was I going to go Copulate Warrior Heavy, um, with a bunch of Dark Lances, Thurmond Raiders, or just keep them back foot? Or was I going to go Witch Heavy? Was I going to do a Raider Spam vehicle, as many vehicles as possible? Or was I going to do the Portal Deployment with a bigger units and heavier units? And I definitely decided on Raiders because a Vehicle Spam Army is... Mecha is very popular these days. Um, I always I like the idea of raiders, um, and they're a lot more effective at getting into combat now. Because uh, with the portal deployment, you zoom forward, and you basically can only put the portal at midfield. And if you only have one of them, your enemy can just bunch up on there. So you have to put your stuff out of your backfield, and then they can get shot up. And it just isn't that effective. You need multiple portals. Um, they're still only going to get to midfield before. Because if not, your enemy's going to just get to target the guy with the portal and kill him before he can throw it down. And it's just too shoddy. It doesn't work that well. I tried it in a doubles tournament. It worked okay. Since we had other um, psychological factors of a bunch of stuff out flanking, but technically they can go through the portal. Uh, it worked semi-well, but in one case it didn't work that well. Um, so I definitely decided on the Raider Spam. Not really Raider Spam. I wouldn't call. Would you call four Raiders Raider Spam? I don't know. Um, but So I decided to actually go with, uh, of course, Mac. And then when I went, decided to go between troops and uh, for my troop choices, well, did I want to go with witches or warriors? Well, I decided to go with a mix of half Hecatrix, uh, half witches originally and half warriors. It was only recently I decided to change them to Hecatrix Blood Brides because, honestly, I don't need five uh, scoring units. The Hellions are going to be up in my enemy's deployment zone tearing stuff up. So they're going to be the ones grabbing his objective, if anything, and the witches would just die. They need the bonus to the leadership and the extra attack and the extra war gear to make them that much more viable, and it's only about 27 more points to make them Hecatrix Blood Brides, so I decided to actually put them up to that, and that actually brought me up perfectly to 1850 before I changed some more things in my list. I'm not at quite 1850, but it's close enough. I might make some few alterations to this list, but nothing crucial. Um... And, uh, so, and also one of the major things I decided to put in this army was, of course, the Baron. Um, I decided immediately I liked the idea, I liked the fluff behind the Baron, but also he does a lot of good stuff. He strength six on the charge, he strength six, and then when he has free his charge, he strength seven on the charge. That's very, very good with a high initiative. You can take down monstrous creatures. Um, he makes Hellion's troops, which is nothing great. I mean, I was going to use Hellions anyway. And then he makes the Hellion unit he's with viable. Originally, I was uh, promoting him as being part of a big Hellion group, which makes it very, very good because he gives him stealth, reroll dangerous terrain test. The idea with these guys is to jump around an area terrain, and also their shooting is basically a uh, two shots of a splinter rifle at 18 inches, but it's assault. So, very good weapon. Um, so they can be dual purpose. They can do what the warriors do, or they can do what the witches do. They're mostly going to go after light independent characters like librarians and priests and stuff of that nature. Take them out so I don't have to worry about them. It's just the idea behind them. And then the warriors are going to grab midfield objectives and be fire support. Mostly in their raiders and then when they get knocked out, well they're going to cug area terrain. Get a 4+, plus. hopefully at that point I have a pain token so they get a 4+, plus 4+. Plus. Sit on my objectives while my witches, or Hecatrix Blood Brides I should say, run forward, cause enough pain to my enemy. Helions, as another wave, distract them. Ravagers start pinging away. My raiders I do not expect to survive whatsoever. They all they die way too quickly. It's playing glass hammer. It's paper mache transports. What can you expect? Um, they basically get them to where they're gonna be needed and then let the uh, mass amount of infantry do the job. I have about uh over 50 infantry, about 52 foot models. So I'm not lacking on the actual infantry side. That's another thing about Dark Elder. You need to have big units for them to be effective. 
but if you're going to go to the Raider deployment, you only have up to 10. Well, you want to have exactly 10 models in each transport. If you have five models in transport, it's too small. It's not going to do any good for you. Unless you're doing trueborn spamming a specific type of weapon, such as uh, splinter cannons or blasters and a venom, that is viable because the splinter cannons and a venom, you're getting a lot of shots out of there that are poisoned, or the blasters, you're getting a lot of blaster shots. And it's a specific unit with a specific goal in mind. And it fits that goal quite well. All right, so the idea of this army is turn one, Ravagers spread out. Move 12 inches and start picking out transports. The uh, Raiders with the Warriors move forward 12 inches. Blasters are in range. Blasters start pinging away. If not, the Dark Lances start pinging away. Witches advance Aether Sails and flat out move forward behind pieces of blocking a line of sight terrain about, hopefully about uh, 18 inches to 20 inches away. So that way they're set up for assaults but won't be shot at too heavily. Hopefully trying to get as much enemy firepower away from them. Warriors hop out, grab objectives midfield, which is run forward, turn two, start assaulting things. Uh, the Baron and his Helions shooting stuff up and assaulting, picking off enemy characters that I need to get rid of. And then end game, hopefully have my Hecatrix Blood Brides swarm in to get all enemies. Ravagers ping away enough stuff. My Raiders probably be dead at that point. And then grab objectives and win game, hopefully. All right. So when thinking about how I'm playing against Marcus, I know for a fact he's bringing his Gene Stealer shock list, which is Gene Stealer spam there, flanking two units of Murals, uh, Trigon Prime, two Hive Tyrants with wings, and uh, Hive Commander, and of course 20 Hormigons, I believe. Um, the way I'm going to play against him in this game is I know for a fact he's outflanking everything. And I know for a fact he w wants me he wants me to uh, go towards area terrain. I'm not going to do that this game. If it's an objectives game, I'm going to line the objectives in the middle to make them as hard for him to grab as possible. If not, I'll maybe I might just spread them around. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to move forward and I'm going to lean slightly towards one side with less terrain. Hopefully, he's going to try to jump on me and outflank most of his stuff on that side if he has the choice. If not, he's just going to bring in as much stuff on the one side. When I figure out what side he has the his weak side essentially, where he has the least amount of units, I'm going to jump over with my witches and my Helions are going to move over there and assault and take care of the gene stealers. I know for a fact Hecatrix Blood Brides can take out gene stealers and assault. They're good enough with the invulnerable save in combat and the amount of attacks they can put out that they can take out the gene stealers before they take any casualties, if not too many. Hopefully getting Furious Charge out of this. Now my Helions and my Warriors are basically going to be on monstrous creature duty. Monstrous creatures are going to be a pain in the ass to kill. So basically their job is going to be to rapid fire and take them down quickly. As well as every single Dark Lance in my army. He's going to be focusing in on his uh, Hive Tyrants and his Trigon. Try to take care of them as quickly as possible. They are a problem, but they're not going to be too much of a threat. Strength 80 EP2 when they don't have invulnerable saves. And then of course all the poison weapons should be able to take them down quickly. And if they survive the first round of shooting, of course... Uh, the Baron here will just move in with his Trank 6 and hopefully punch him in combat with one wound left. Then when Jumarls show up, I jump on his Jumarls as quickly as possible, take him out with Splinter uh, Fire, hopefully, which is change field, go over to the other side, and everything in my army just moves over, hopefully mostly intact. I should be expecting about 25% casualties at this point. Most of my Raiders will probably be alive since he has very little shooting. I think only his Trigon can shoot, besides Paroxysm, which I'm not really worried about from his Hive Tyrant, um, since I'm not really going to be assaulting him. Hopefully, he's silly and puts Paroxysm on these guys. Since they're twin-linked, I'll still get shots off. Um, switch field, go over, assault, kick care of his army with only a little bit of casualties, and wrap up that game with a win. The Necron army, it's a little bit different. He runs a Destroyer Spam with a heavy, heavy focus on keeping his stuff, keeping his warriors behind the monolith, the mortals up front. He's going to run a destroyer lord instead of Satan, which normally he runs a Satan. Um, since there, he's not running Satan originally, I was planning on just shooting splinter fire at a Satan and having everything else go after other stuff, but now I, I'm changing my uh, idea. So what's going to happen is my all my vehicles in the back, all my dark lances as possible in the army, are going to start pinging away at his destroyers. Strength 8, 8, B2. Hopefully I can down them before they get, will be back. Let's get, take them out of the game quickly since they are the biggest threat to my army. 
which is they're going to move up nearby, hiding, since I know he's going to cluster. I can easily hide away from him out of line of sight. Um, then I'm going to move in with my witches, hopefully uh, haywire grenade the crap out of his monolith, which is very good, since I can glance in on it too with haywire grenades, he's not going to be moving it. I know the way he plays his monolith, most people play their monoliths, and he's not going to move it. So that'll take care of the monolith a little bit, and the other witch squad will just be running around smacking warriors down, taking them out good. Same thing with the uh, uh, Lord of Baron here, taking out some uh, warriors. Um, if he tries to run his destroyer lord by himself, hopefully a hex rifle will be able to take him out pretty easily. I, I don't know. It's going to happen eventually. I hope it <laughs> works against the Necrons. Um, if he's playing with his Necrons and it's an objectives game, I'll spread out the objectives as far away as possible. I'll use my speed to grab them while he can't get to them when he clusters up in his very slow army. And if it's a kill points game, I'm just going to go for the kill points and run away. <laughs> Get out of that Goss fire range, because they can wreck my uh, raiders being open-topped. So, hopefully it's good games. I am have a very good record against Marcus. I've only ever lost him once and tied him once. Every other game has been a win for me. Uh, he's a good buddy of mine. He's actually my favorite person to play in 40k. And um, I hope to get two wins out of this and get a good idea of how to play a very, very good competitive Tyranid list. He's one of the best Tyranid players I know and uh, get some an idea of how to play against Necrons with this army. And I'll get back to you tomorrow with the battle reports. So, more on this later.